The ASX's best graphite miners are up between 16 and 76% over the last month. We're zeroing in to have a look at the best performers and what their charts are saying. This is Final Market Points, where we connect the leading market themes and the top performing companies for better trading. You can like the video to support the channel, click subscribe for updates, or comment below to let us know which graphite miners you're trading and what patterns they're using. Now, we're having a look at this chart. We're going to have a look at the daily chart for a year on the left-hand side. And then on this table on the right-hand side, we're going to have a look at the tickers, the name, the week, month, and quarter performance. We're really focusing on the monthly performance, which is a highlighted column here. So then we have the tickers of the codes that we're looking at. Zeroing in, we're going to start off at SYR. That's the sixth best performer over the last month. Drag that over to the chart on the left-hand side and zoom out to see how it's performed over the year. The red line is a 200-day moving average. The green is a 50 and the blue line is a 10-day moving average. We can see that it has fallen under that 200-day but recently kicked back over it and then pushed on from a dollar towards like dollar thirty-five in recent times. And that's got them a 16% gain over the last month. Moving on up, we've got Talga Group, TLG. We should note that these companies that we're surfacing are not necessarily graphite miners, but they are exposed to that graphite supply chain, just that most of them in, on the ASX are graphite miners. You can see that they have had a good strong rally. If we bring the lens out, you can see that most of them have really surged throughout the main part of 2020. So coming out of the COVID lows that we can see on the left-hand side here and really surging on up. We will see nobody to being the best performer for most of it, and you can see 210%. But for now, we're looking at Talga Group, TLG. And this is where it gets interesting because we start surfacing other patterns before the breakouts. And this is what we're consistently doing on the Fridays and Saturdays to look at the high momentums and then the high velocity stocks before they break out, which is normally in this region here where they're surfaced. So having a look, we can see what would be a volatility contraction pattern. And for those of you who want to learn more about VCPs, there's a tutorial below and then also a download to really walk through it. But Mark Minavini's pattern, we start off with the high, it's got a, a drop to then a rally. And then what we're seeing is each time it bounces and rallies, it gets smaller and smaller and tighter and tighter. That's volatility contracting. So think of it as sort of coming down into a funnel, a point or an apex, depending on who you follow and what you use, actually why looking at an apex or many other traders that use that philosophy of tightening and coiling of a spring. What we also want to see is the volume down the bottom. That really tighten up. So when we've got this massive candle over here, this bar, let's zoom in to get rid of that so we can see the greater discrepancy between these rallies. So when they're breaking out, we've got some spikes in volume down the bottom and then more spikes over here as it's congesting. But you do see it really tightening up. We've got some tight closes here from a Wyckoff perspective, that's important. And Richard Crabble. Then we also tighten over, move up, and then see the volatility starting to expand here. So it's already started to move out. So this is the volatility contraction really happening here and that large contraction. Next up, we have LEL. So we're going to bring that chart over on the left-hand side, see how that's been performing over the same period. We can see that it is a recent listing. So for the two-year history that we saw with Talga Group and zooming out for the graphite thematic, we're not going to see that. So the listing in May has surged and rallied up this is almost a VCP out of the out of the IPO, then rallying with good strong volume, and then contracting once again before rallying and breaking out from 70 cents to get up to a dollar 20 in recent times. But for the month, they put on 47.8% for LEL Lift Energy being one of the better performers. Move on up, we do see a name that has dominated the markets on the ASX, and it's having a look at this chart to see why. We get something that was trading around 20 cents less than two years ago to get up to sort of $9.50 where it has been trading most recently. Novanix has put on 54% over the last month. We've studied this one many times before, looked at the VCP throughout this period here. The bounce, bounce, bounce coming over the 200 day moving average, really tightening up the closes, showing a shortening of thrust. And then as we're seeing tighter closes here, we do want to see a pocket pivot to break out. There's your pocket pivot off the 10 day moving average and a tight congestion, also a volatility contraction pattern, breaking out here and then starting that real surge, $2.40. And then as you see that climb, 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 and then shooting up, what, not quite making the high tight flag. Or the, so you're getting sort of the $2.50, we didn't quite get the $5. To learn more on high and tight flags, you can click on that link in the description below. So it works really well for small mid cap miners on the ASX. Then keep moving from 360 to shoot up to where it did. All it tried, didn't really create a high type flag again, but it's kept running. It did have a pullback 
But as we can see, it read from a Gil Morales and Chris Karch perspective from the pocket pivot back here. But we're looking at Gil Morales and Chris Karcher. There is also a study that we've done for the pocket pivot. They're holding the 10 day moving average because if it holds for more than six weeks, then they maintain that as a traveling stop loss. And then when it breaches on this day here, they'd stop out. Otherwise, it's a 50 day moving average. But we see that would have moved the buyers saying from $2.50 region to $2.55 and then getting out sort of above the $5.50 on the next day after the end of day stops, stopped it. Then it congests somewhat before it starts that next rally up to break out and see to where it is now over $9. That's MBX as being one of the best performers. Moving up, we do see Castle, so CDT. We're going to bring that chart to the left-hand side. You can see it's a lower capitalised, lower share price company. We're talking about less than $0.04 cents here. But moving from 1.8 to 3.6, that's over 100% move. The tightening of this congestion here, that's when we're looking at high and tight flags. So over time, where that congestion breaks out over that downtrend and then pops from this congestion, that could lead to another move, say 1.8 cents on top of the breakout point to possibly getting to five cents if that pans out from a Thomas Bukowski perspective and the measurement rule. So that'd be interesting to watch from CDT. But the best performer that we do have over the last month is MNS, looking at 76% gains and it's been massive movements. This in itself is a minor volatility contraction pattern. We zoom this out to see how it's been moving and you do see the tighter closes. So we'll zoom out to really fit this into the chart. We've got the rally up here, dropping the basketball. It drops and then it flatlines a bit and then it bounces. It doesn't get up to the same highs, so it's lost its power and its thrust. And then it drops down once again. It doesn't drop as low as the last one, so that's a volatility contraction in itself. Smaller rally, smaller contraction. Then a smaller rally once more, zooming in to see how this is panning out on this scale. Smaller rally and then a contraction again, smaller contraction from high to low. Now this is still holding the 200-day moving average as we're progressing along. And we're seeing tighter closes along this movement here, as well as lower volume. We're moving on along and then seeing it pop back up. So it's getting back up to the 50-day moving average and doing that with a bit of volume. We can highlight the volume down here, this green bar on the strong green candle, and then surging back over. If that's your early entry, it's entirely up to you or whether you're looking for it to break over sort of a swing high or what Gary Glover calls a B-wave. It then does it here with good, strong volume, viable gap up from a Gil Morales and Chris Karcher perspective, big jump up there, and then starts that surge, 40 cents to climb on up to getting up towards 75 cents recently. This is a, a criteria, or this does is a candidate for the high and tight flag because looking at this rally from 30 odd cents, getting up to 75 very quickly with very little pause. That's ideally what we want to see in less than two months from Thomas Bukowski's perspective of high and tight flags. Then we want to see it consolidate in the top half of this flagpole. So here's a flagpole running up fast. Here's a congestion that we want to see it tighten up in. We also want to see an explosive movement. So first we want to see it contract. Ideally, we'd see something like this built up here on the contraction, showing it's really tightening up. And then the volume really drying up, so the selling's really subsided. And then breaking out with a good, strong, another pocket pivot, something like this candle here on the breakout to feed a downtrend in the congestion pattern to kick on up to the high and tight flag. That would be an ideal scenario. Time will tell how that pans out. Then we want to compare these to the bigger names that we've looked at over the last year. So we're going to have a look at SYA. You see for the year performance, 319%. So that has been a phenomenal performer, bringing that out to scale that in over the last two years. You're looking at something that was trading at sort of under one, two cents really early on, breaking out, getting over sort of the 2.9, three, four cents, and then getting up to 16 cents touching 20 cents in the last month or so. So their performance in the last month, as you can see, has not shot the lights out, still put on 6.25%. But when you look at it for the year, that's 319%. That's telling us whether this is a high and tight flag because we're looking at 8 cents to 16, good strong flagpole, now we're in that congestion period. And that's what we want to be seeing is whether there is a pocket pivot or some sort of high volume, strong candle breakout that's what we'll be looking for from a high and tight flag. I happen to see that breaking out. Another one that we've seen before is BlackRock BKT. That's only put on 6% for the month as well. But this is where we really where we really came to watch it a lot more. Six cents to 16 cents in a short amount of time. Failed the high and tight flag and then congested and then formed this consolidation pattern where it's just broken out of recently to start gaining once more. The other strong performer has been RNU. 26% for the quarter, 3% for the month, 256% for the last year. 
You nearly see most of that came in January, February, March, which is really where that came on to our watch list charts and surfacing that as a market leader on the ASX. You got a high and tight flag here that did break out. So we'll zoom in and have a look at that for a second. That's why we really like these patterns. Getting 100% gain. We're moving from 1.2 cents to 4 cents. Definitely 100% gain. Getting congestion and you're seeing these closes tighten, tighten, tighten. Even to some inside days here. And then you're getting a good, strong volume, but it was weak. It did fail and closed really low. So that looked like a failed breakout. But then it research tightens. And then we do on it. Then we do see a strong candle with a high close and decent volume above the last few days. And definitely the highest of any of the lows against any of the lows in the last 10. So it's, there's a strong surge in itself. And that's the high and tight flag breaking out and then rallying. We'll zoom out to keep that context coming in. This is a failed high and tight flag. It just didn't really form, but does pull back to sit on sort of this support area. Turns along sideways. 200 day comes up towards meeting it. We'll zoom out to see whether we're getting a volatility contraction pattern, but a one rally, a minor rally with a smaller contraction, churning along sideways and then popping up. So if you could call that a VCP, good luck to you trading that. But then there's a pocket pivot on the breakout the 4th of August and then starting that surge on up and then does that form a cap on handle, we're zooming out a bit more. So is this rally and then a small handle? It's in the lower half, so that doesn't count. We'll be looking at this as being the handle over here to the right-hand side and then forming that whether that does create a large cup and handle for RNU, time will tell, but that's what we're looking at at the moment for RNU. So these are the graphite leaders on the ASX. Once again, thanks for joining us. We're surfacing these leaders weekly and also looking for the contraction patterns and the high velocity companies in this part of the area as they start to break out from their contractions. That's high velocities on Saturdays.